Welcome to Agenda Edina, a news program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. This year marks the 60th anniversary of the first graduating class of Edina High School. The Edina Community Foundation honored the class of 1951 by selecting them as Grand Marshals of this year's 4th of July Parade. Edina 16 producer Steve Christensen has more. Every July 4th, the Parade Edina brings out the crowds to celebrate our independence. This year's Grand Marshals, the Edina Morningside High School, Class of 51, were also celebrating a special occasion. Very pleased that they have chosen us. Uh, we were the first graduating class, and so it's our 60th year, and we're very happy to see uh, everybody and see the change, uh, looking at uh, what has happened here and in the city, the schools, the community, the parks. Opening in 1949, the new students got to choose their colors, school song, as well as their mascot. We did a lot of things that were new and we were able to choose a lot of things. Although it was 7th through 12th grade or 7th through 11th when it started and we were outnumbered pretty uh, strongly by the younger kids uh, in 7th, 8th, ninth grade and uh, we didn't vote uh, quite to have the Hornets, but that's what the younger ones wanted and that's what we got. The class of 51 had many firsts for the school. I played on the first football team and we only won one game, but we had a great time. We think we got the first trophies that the, that the school had ever had. There had been no Edina High School. So anything we put in the trophy case was a first. Frank and Bill have many great memories of those early school years and being part of this year's 4th of July parade will surely be another one. We had a good time. We had a lot of fun and yeah. it was a, a great beginning mm -hmm. of the school system. For Edina 16, I'm Steve Christensen. The theme of this year's parade, America the Beautiful, was chosen in honor of the 125th anniversary of the official dedication of the Statue of Liberty. The community also celebrated Independence Day with fireworks that lit up the night sky at Roslyn Park. The event was sponsored by Fairview Southdale Hospital. If you want to dine outdoors at any diner restaurant, you'll have to enjoy your fare on a patio. Last month, the City Council approved an ordinance banning rooftop dining. In 2010, owners of Cucina del Barrio expressed interest in constructing a rooftop dining area during the remodeling of their restaurant space in downtown Edina. An adjacent property owner expressed concerns about locating a rooftop restaurant close to residential property. As a result, the Council imposed a moratorium and directed staff to study if rooftop restaurants should be allowed in Edina, and if so, how they should be regulated. After a lengthy discussion this year, council members indicated they did not feel comfortable with rooftop dining so close to the condominiums in the area. There's still probably a third of uh, the condominiums left to be sold down there at 5,000 francs, all in the million dollar range. Uh, this would put a chill uh, on that ability to sell, I think that would be permanent in nature. And for resale, I think it would be very, very difficult. At the time the ban went into effect, there were no pending requests from existing restaurants for rooftop dining. Every summer, Edina residents flock to the Edina Aquatic Center for sun, fun, and time to cool off in the pool. But before that happens, the facility must be prepared for summer, which takes some time and goes beyond just filling up the pool. Edina 16's Max Orenstein explains. Each May, Bill Bryan spends a lot of time at the Edina Aquatic Center. His mission? Getting the pool ready for opening day on June 11th. It starts with making sure everything is clean. I don't want somebody leaving here with a rash. So he and his assistant Justin go to extremes to ensure that the patron's experience is safe. And we're going to adjust the saddle so that this whole tube sits up a little higher so when we put the panels on um, there's no pinch points. Of course, the pool still must be filled. Just a little over 680,000 gallons. Very impressive. And then there are the drains in the showers that must be replaced. Every drain, this is just short of being a piece of junk right now. Part of the reason this is being done is because a new floor is being installed. And then they had to come in 
the city of Edina and raise all the drains for us so we could be at the proper level that we needed to be at. The process for the floor takes some time. Chicken feed is what we're doing is we're taking a five gallon bucket, we got it filled up with the granulars, and then basically out onto the floor and we broadcast to ejection to where you don't see any wet spots. Spikes are the purpose so you don't need footprints in the floor. But at the end of the day, well, we're coming down to the end. All that Bill's team has left to do is put on the finishing details. Making sure our chemicals are safe, our water is treated to the right proportions to be legal to open. We're uh, waxing the slides. It's the little things that Bill wants to make sure are operating smoothly so that the patient's experience is enjoyable and safe on opening day. Ready to go? Yep. My feeling is I want everybody to be, that, that comes to this facility to be as happy with it as I am. The day we open, there's great satisfaction in knowing that we have a clean, safe facility for the residents and non-residents to enjoy. And knowing that it's safe is primary. For Edina 16, I'm Max Ornstein. The Edina Aquatic Center is open Monday through Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. and from 10 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Seeing a tugboat or military warship gliding across the water at Centennial Lakes Park seems unlikely. But that's exactly what spectators witnessed at a recent event. Edina 16, Scott Denfeld has the story. Centennial Lakes Park is home base to a club that specializes in miniature maritime marvels. We have work boats like tugs and tow boats. We have military boats, pleasure boats. They were all part of an annual event that has entertained spectators for a long time. This is our big annual event. This is our 20th parade of boats. Hosted by the Edina Model Yacht Club, one of the bigger clubs in the United States, according to club commodore Joe Steele, the Parade of Boats event has become a way for the club to say thank you to the city of Edina. Well, it's kind of our paying Edina back for all their support throughout the year to have a community event where people can come and see what we've been doing for the year. And the public gets an up-close look at the care and work that goes into these boats. Some of the boats, well, like the one in the foyer, took about five years to build. Uh, as far as the expense, it can be anywhere from about $35 on up. We have some boats here that are priceless. Longtime club member Dick Walker hopes that the event will spark some interest in newcomers, even if it seems intimidating at first. The, the interesting reaction is, and it's kind of sometimes too bad, because, oh, I couldn't, I can't do that. You know, they, they uh, downgrade themselves a little bit because they, they're maybe afraid to try or but it's, it's one of these hobbies that you may fail a little bit a few times or think you fail, but have you really? If you've tried it, you haven't failed, and then the next one always gets better. That's a real steam engine, uh, and that, believe me, that takes an awful lot of talent to do. To Dick, Joe, and all the other members of the club, model boating offers hours of enjoyment that they would love to share with others. Well, I would hope that they would come and join us because we really enjoy it and we can't understand why they wouldn't. For Edina 16, I'm Scott Denfeld. The Edina Model Yacht Club's next big event will be held August 14th at Centennial Lakes Park. More than 100 tiki torches will burn behind Hughes Pavilion and the park's special lighting will be featured. At 8 p.m. there will be open boating in the central pond for model yachts. The first John Philip Sousa Memorial Band will perform in the amphitheater at 8.30 p.m. At dusk, boats from the Model Yacht Club will light up the lake. Interior cockpit and cabin lights, searchlights and floodlights will shimmer off the water. The backdrop will be a floating and fully operational scaled model of a lighthouse. Edina is graying, that according to figures recently released by the United States Census Bureau. According to the 2010 Census, the median age in Edina is 45.2, up from 44.5 in 2000. However, the under 20 age categories are gaining slightly. Nearly 26% of the population is now under 20, compared to 24% a decade ago. The largest age group in Edina is made up of those 45 to 54. 
four, representing nearly 16% of the population. The city receives questions from people out in the business community pretty often uh, looking at wondering what is the demographic makeup of Edina and how might our community fit the needs for their services. So uh, the business community has also really been looking forward to this information. Edina's population is now 47,941, up 1.1% from 2,000 figures. Edina's population has remained relatively unchanged for the past four decades. Still to come, the city begins to work to make more safe water in the community. But first, the astounding results of a recent quality of life survey when we return. Welcome back to Agenda Edina. Almost everyone who lives in the community is happy to call Edina home. That according to a recent survey conducted by Decision Resources. The local polling firm contacted a random sample of Edina residents in April and May to gather information about issues facing the city. Approximately 400 residents were contacted via telephone and asked their opinions on topics ranging from city parks and recreation to communications and public safety. An outstanding 90% rated their quality of life as excellent. Decision Resources will share additional details from the survey with the City Council later this month. My initial reaction was the, the information was uh, quite positive. The results were very positive. Um, the next stage though is to take this information and begin to learn from it, uh, to begin to develop some takeaways from it, uh, and we'll be doing that the rest of the summer. A quality of life survey like this has not been completed in Edina in over 10 years. City Manager Scott Neal says he believes gathering information through surveys like this is important and that he plans to complete them more regularly. Nothing quite says summer like a lush green lawn. However, there are rules to keep in mind when watering your grass. Edina 16's Jordan Gilgenback has the details. While it's nice to have a green lawn, it's also important to conserve our natural resources. For this reason, the city of Edina has a set of watering rules in place. Uh, we have a year-round water sprinkling policy. It's an odd-even policy, meaning if your address is even, like 6,300, uh, you'd be allowed to water on even numbered days, two, four, six, etc. In addition, the city also bans watering during the day between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. when irrigating is not efficient. If people are sprinkling, up to 60% of that water can be lost to the atmosphere through evaporation. Um, so really we want just want to conserve the water that we have and then use best practices to put it down on our lawns. There are certain areas in the city that are exempt from this watering policy. If you are in a private well for your irrigation, you do not have to follow the policy. Uh, we ask that you try to work with us and use the odd even just to minimize confusion. 
and also those customers in the Morningside area that get their water from Minneapolis would have to follow any regulations that Minneapolis has. The rules also differ for those who are landscaping. If someone has laid new sod or, re or recently seeded their lawn, they can come in here to the Public Works building and get a permit and it gives them permission to water their lawn every day for 14 days. Free permits are available at the new Public Works facility at any time of the year but be sure to plan ahead. If the aquifers were really starting to get drawn down, uh, number one is obviously for human consumption. Irrigation is kind of a secondary issue, so we monitor the water levels at all of our wells, and if we see them getting into a danger area, we would take further steps. After the initial warning, homeowners are fined $50 for the first offense, increasing $50 for every violation after that to a maximum of $300 per violation. With Aaron Klein, I'm Jordan Gilgenbeck, Edina 16. Residents might want to consider using timers and rain sensors on their irrigation systems to help conserve water. Save clean drinking water. That's the goal of a new water treatment plant under construction in Edina's Grandview area. The new water treatment plant will be located in the lower level of the Jerry's parking ramp on Brookside Avenue. The ramp is owned by the city and is adjacent to the former Public Works facility. The new water treatment plant will receive water from four wells and have the capacity to treat 4,000 gallons of water per minute. Although all city water is treated, not every well is filtered for the removal of iron and manganese, naturally occurring minerals in groundwater. The city's long-term goal is to filter all of its wells, and the construction of water treatment plant 6 is a positive step in that direction. In addition, the water treatment plant will house an aeration system that will also strip elements of vinyl chloride from the drinking water. This will bring three wells that are currently unfiltered um, under that umbrella, as well as one of the wells that's currently shut down, number seven, because of that vinyl chloride. This is a way to treat it and uh, put that well back into production. It will also be our largest uh, treatment plant in terms of gallons per minute. The Public Works Department estimates the plant will cost approximately $5.7 million and be operational by April 2012. The developer of a controversial senior housing project will go back to the Planning Commission this month seeking permission for a smaller building. The City Council has approved rezoning, site plan and a comprehensive plan amendment for the Waters Senior Living of Edina, a proposed 139-unit three-story senior housing complex on the Colonial Church site. Final plat approval is still pending and the developer has now requested a change to the building. The developer would like to shorten its planned building by 28 feet and remove the underground parking below its memory support wing. The Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on the matter. Once the Commission acts on the matter, it will be heard by the City Council. Before we go, we want to highlight some of the many upcoming events in our community. The Farmer's Market at Centennial Lakes Park is underway, held 3 to 7 p.m. every Thursday throughout the summer. Centennial Lakes Park is also the site of movies in the park at dusk on Thursday evenings. This month's movies are Easy A, True Grit, Hairspray, and Twilight Eclipse. The Minnesota Mosaic Guild has brought its work to the Edina Arts Center. An exhibit of Guild members' work opened June 30th and continues through August 3rd. I hope you're enjoying summer in Edina. Thanks for watching this month's episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.